This is the eHealth Radio Network, your source for health advice on demand. And now your host, Eric Michaels. Thanks for joining us once again here on the Health Radio Network. This is your host, Eric Michaels. Today we're speaking with both Christine Cooper, the CEO of Aquium LLC, and the co-managing member of Kohler Fitzgerald LLC, a law firm with a national practice. Christine leads the firm's health care practice and is dedicated to assisting and defending plans and patients. Also with us today is Jack Tornicki, an ERISA employee benefits compliance and planning attorney having over 40 years of experience in human resources and plan sponsor leadership roles. Now, many of you are juggling work and family life with all the work from home and hybrid employment. The lines are blurred and there is a struggle for balance. Open enrollment is the one time of year when every organization has an audience that should be primed, ready to hear about benefits, but that isn't always the case. Now, today our goal is to help you choose the right health coverage option for 2023 to help you avoid mistakes. Both Christine Cooper and Jack Tornicky and I are going to review what Aquium believes are the top 10 annual enrollment mistakes when it comes to employer-sponsored health care coverage. And we're going to do it in countdown fashion, Letterman style, if you will, from simply bad all the way down to painful. Painful mistakes you and your employer should avoid at annual enrollment. And Christine and Jack, thanks for joining us once again here on the Health Radio. Thank you for having us. You bet. And thank you both so much for your time once again. So let's just get started right away. Number 10, Christine, what is number 10? So number 10 is an employer mistake. It's the employer who fails to offer workers a choice of coverage. Regardless of the size of the employer, that employer should anticipate a diversity of medical coverage needs. Not everyone fits the same mold, uh, both today and tomorrow. At a minimum, the employer should offer at least two choices. Uh, Typical would be a PPO, Uh, in a health savings account capable option. And who has number nine? Jack, I think that was a great fit for you. You bet. Number nine is also an employer mistake. It's the decision to use a passive enrollment process. Passive means that the workers' existing coverage selections will continue until they take action to review the options and make different choices. The The annual enrollment process really should prompt individuals to make affirmative elections. And and that's true even if it's the same choices year after year. Interesting. So now what is number eight? Yeah, number eight is another employer mistake. It's the failure to adjust coverage comparisons so that the differences, especially the differences in provider networks and your out-of-pocket costs, your contributions and out-of-pocket costs are apparent so that they're obvious. For example, where a health savings account capable coverage option is offered, the employer often fails to adjust the deductible for the other choice, the other choice, typically the PPO, so that the deductible works exactly the same way in both options. Bottom line, once you have a good idea about your expected utilization, if you have to spend more than five minutes looking at a side-by-side comparison of two coverage options, That means that the differences aren't obvious or that the comparison has too much detail. Okay, three strikes and the employer are out. So our audience now knows that the employer should offer a choice of coverage and at least one of the options should allow the worker to save in a health savings account. The employer should have an active enrollment process, not a passive process where workers must make Affirmative elections of coverage in the side-by-side comparison should be clean and clear enough so that the worker who knows what they expect to spend on medical can make a decision in less than five minutes. Okay, so now we have some idea about what you might ask your employer. So what's next? What's lucky number seven? Uh, Unlucky number seven. Uh, Number seven is bias. We let bias affect our decisions. We tend to make decisions by relying on heuristics or rules of thumb. One example is where people think is expensive is always better. That coverage with the smallest deductible or the highest contribution must be the better choice, even though I don't anticipate any significant medical expenses. Could be wasting a lot of your money. All right. With six, you get an egg roll. Now you could look it up. So what is number six? Yeah, number six is overinsurance. You paid too much, or as one insurance company motto says, only pay for what you need. Overinsurance can result when you focus too much on monthly or per payday costs, what you think you can afford. 
versus an estimate of all the costs you anticipate for an entire year. Bias also causes workers to overestimate the likelihood of some easy to imagine outcomes or recent events, what some call the availability heuristic. For example, like a, a coworker uh, or a family member uh, who suffered an illness or an injury. People sometimes fixate on what happens, you know, what has happened to other folks and think, what if? What if I need surgery and the like? Now, today we're speaking with both Christine Cooper, the CEO of Aquium LLC and the co-managing member of Kohler Fitzgerald LLC, a law firm with a national practice. And also with us on the program is Jack Tornicky, an ERISA employee benefits compliance and planning attorney here on e Radio's healthcare and health insurance channels a part of the eHealth Radio Network. Now, what is number five continuing on? Sure. Uncertainty. No one likes uncertainty, right? Uncertainty tends to result in opportunity losses. There's a lot of uncertainty in predicting medical utilization, but for almost everyone, medical spend increases with age. So the time to save is now because our out-of-pocket expenses are likely to increase in the future. And when it comes to saving for future future medical expenses, the best option is a health savings account. And so you might ask why. Well, it saves on taxes. Often there is an employer contribution. And consider this. Most of us are likely to make it to retirement age when if we're lucky enough to have avoided medical costs, we can spend HSA dollars the same way we would spend money from a 401k or an individual retirement account. So actually saving in an HSA is often better than saving in a 401k. At the halfway point here and a lot of great feedback and information here. Now, saving in an HSA is better than saving in a 401k. That's a question, by the way. Where can one find more information in these regards? Contact us at aquiumhealth.com. Uh, it's A-E-Q-U-U-M-H-E-A-L-T-H.com. Uh, contact Jack. Uh, with your questions about health savings accounts, or if your employer doesn't offer a health savings account capable plan, have your employer reach out to Jack. He is one of America's foremost experts when it comes to health savings accounts. Uh, he can give you all the all the details and information. Excellent. And we'll leave that link within the show notes of this broadcast, as we always do. So now we're down to the last four. Number four, Jack. Uh, it's me. Um, it's another employer mistake, what some people call choice blindness or choice overload. Studies show that three choices are often one too many, especially for something as complex as medical coverage. And that takes us to number three, Christine, if you would do the honors. Another employer mistake, this time in marketing or communications. Too many times, employers focus communications on the deductible. Some even name the options that way, for example, the $500 plan. That results in something economists call an anchoring bias. It draws an inordinate amount of attention to the size of the deductible. During annual enrollment in your decision making, you should compare the difference in deductibles between options, the difference in contributions between options, and the difference in total cost based on your expected utilization. So don't limit just to looking at the deductible. Hey, good advice there. Thanks for that. Now, we're down to the number two mistake. Yeah, that would be myopia. One big mistake we all make is limiting our focus to today or next week or next month, or even next year. But we all expect to live beyond, in this case, 2023. So our coverage decisions should include today and tomorrow, specifically saving, improving our household's financial resilience. Accumulating savings in 2023 ensures you're better prepared for future annual enrollment decision-making. Well, we have arrived to the top or to the bottom, however you look at it, and the number one mistake people make when it comes to annual enrollment is? Inertia. People are inert. Most don't spend more than 30 minutes on benefits decision-making each year. Some skip annual enrollments altogether. I mean, nothing has changed in your life or household or in the coverage marketplace or in your employment over the past three years, right? Remember to ask other adults in your household for their input. If you're enrolled in the same health coverage today that you were before the pandemic, you should at least reconsider any available alternatives just in case they did change. Also, if you're enrolled in a health savings account, it's a good time to update your rate of contributions. But remember, unlike other accounts, you can prospectively change your HSA contribution rate any month during the year. Keeping the same choice year after year after year is a form of status quo bias. How would you know if it's still the right choice unless you give it a fresh new look? So don't know where to start? Ask for help. 
Well, we can't thank you enough for taking a moment to be with us here today, Christine and Jack, and for all you do and uh, some super information here. As we conclude, is there anything else you'd like to add, a final word or a thought, anything else along the lines of our session here today? Yeah, so we'll, we're going to put a summary of these tips uh, on our website at aquiumhealth.com so that any listeners can refer to it for their annual enrollment this year as well as in the future. But start today, ask your employer for the dates of annual enrollment and what coverage options there that will be offered in 2023. Uh, have the employer contact Jack. Uh, encourage them to offer a health savings account capable option and start putting together your estimate of what you and your household members are going to spend and what you need for medical in 2023. Always so important to plan ahead and you both have helped and provided us a resource and a tool to do just that planning ahead for 2023. Thank you so much again folks for more information simply visit aquiumhealth.com this link will be included within the show notes of this broadcast. Christine and Jack, thanks so much again for joining us here today on E-Health Radio and look forward to another conversation. Thank you. Thanks. Again, we've been speaking with both Christine Cooper, the CEO of Aquium LLC and the co-managing member of Kohler Fitzgerald LLC, a law firm with a national practice, and also Jack Tornicki, an ERISA employee benefits compliance and planning attorney. And for all the details, once again, visit Aquium Health. Com. And again, this has been your host, Eric Michaels, and we do thank you for your continued support of the eHealth Radio Network. Join us again soon for another episode that will help further expand your knowledge on those things that are important to your health and wellness. For more eHealth Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site at eHealthRadioNetwork.com. And as always, we do thank you for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the eHealth Radio Network. For more information or to subscribe to this podcast, visit eHealthRadioNetwork.com.